What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for September 1st, 2024. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. Yes, it is September. That means football is right around the corner. It's also the kickoff to our second anniversary celebration week. And remember, starting today, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel and interact with the Back to the Future voice and text line at 267-495-8531 text message or voicemail, you will be entered into a drawing for a free Philly Goat t-shirt of your choice. Very excited to offer this promotion to you guys and just as my way of saying thank you for two years worth of this day in Philly sports history. So interact, anything you want to interact Philly sports related on the Back to the Future voice and text line, 267-495-8531 and be sure to subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel Jimbo underscore Mont and you will be entered automatically to win a Philly Goat t-shirt. I'll do the drawing next Monday after the anniversary show. But again, looking forward to some fun stuff this week as we celebrate the two-year anniversary of this day in Philly sports history. You can also follow me on social media, Jimbo underscore Mont on Twitter and TikTok, at Philly Jimbo on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, all of it. Get your subscriptions into the YouTube channel, though, and then call or text the Back to the Future voice and text line to enter to get that free Philly Goat t-shirt of your choice. And if you're going to be in Brazil, unfortunately, you will not be able to follow me on Twitter as Brazil apparently is going to ban Twitter just in time for everybody to be coming down for the Eagles Packers game. More on that in a minute. But the Phillies with, and it, I'm going to say, an amazing win. What a win. Zach Wheeler was lights out. He's been dominant recently. So that that was a great win. So now you're guaranteed to come out of that Brave series with a five-game lead. But I'm going to get greedy. Let's make it a seven-game lead and really start hammering those nails as the calendar starts to switch over to September. It was Wheeler's 100th win of his career, which is a pretty cool feat. And I will say, I, I will give credit where credit is due. Michael Harris's catch was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't seen it, Go check out the replay. It was absolutely ridiculous. Almost fell over the fence. But what a catch and one of the better catches I've ever seen at Citizens Bank Park. So we'll take it um, because we still got the 3-0 win. But then uh, overshadowed, uh, Johan Rojas is kind of nonchalant robbing of a home run as well. Just sort of stuck his glove up and and didn't make a big deal about it. That probably would have been the play of the day had it not been for Michael Harris. Uh, But the Phils look to take three of four from the Braves tonight. Uh, Aaron Nola taking on Schellenbach. Uh, That is the Sunday night baseball game tonight. So everybody's going to be watching. So let's come out and really just show everybody what we can do. They're still tied with Milwaukee for that second seed. Two games back of the Dodgers. Like I said, six games up right now on the Braves. Let's make it seven and start putting those nails in. And we're almost to the point where we can start talking magic numbers. We might be talking them later this week. So that's always a fun thing too. But great win for the Phils, I'll be willing to say. And as long as they come out and play decent tonight, even if they don't win, I think tomorrow on the pod, I will be ready to say they are back. It's a new month. Let's get it rolling and get it kind of on a nice little run here going into the, the the postseason. Be sure to check out my boys over at the Clashing Conferences podcast. I was on with them for baseball this week. That is available wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. And then the OG guys are back for the NFC East preview in the season. Picked right up where they left off. So all of that is available wherever you get your podcasts as well as on YouTube. And then do some back-to-school shopping. Check out what Philly Goat has to offer if you're going to enter to win the free shirt. And then use the promo code Jim Montgomery to take 10% off your order. PhillyGoat.com, promo code Jim Montgomery for 10% off of your order. All right, speaking of the Eagles, yes, Twitter is going to be disabled in Atlanta, or, uh, Brazil. So not really sure how we're going to get some updates. Uh, might have to go the old school way and read the newspaper. Um but it was an interesting development out of there. And then Peacock will be broadcasting the game. But here, I guess it will be on local TV, which 
the, the way the NFL does that, where you have to subscribe to even watch games, is is ridiculous. Luckily, it's included on my cable package, I think, or else I'm paying for it. I don't know, but we shouldn't have to worry about it here. It should be on regular TV. And then they, they start their preparations this week, so we should have tomorrow some injury updates uh, and see where some guys stand for that. The, the line currently right now is uh, Eagles two and a half. Not really sure yet how I feel and, and still still getting a feel for, for which way this is going to go. Uh, the over-under is 48 and a half. Right now, I'm kind of leaning toward the over still, I think, uh, until the, the defenses catch up to the offenses. I, I think we might see a lot of fireworks down there. And the more I think about the whole uniform thing where there's the informal ban on green and is it really there, I, I will say, since it's an Eagles home game, and I, I don't know if this is a little bit of gamesman, gamesmanship by the Eagles, since the Brazil fans that are down there don't like green, I wonder if the Eagles subconsciously and maybe like are sending a message to the Packers like, okay, we're trying to get those fans on our side by not wearing any green on our uniform. Just an interesting thought. I don't know if that played a role into it. But the more I'm thinking about these jerseys, I'm like, huh, that's a little bit of gamesmanship there by the Eagles. And I, I like it. But we'll have more Eagles coverage as we go through the week. But like I said, they're actually technically probably a little bit later today. But they are practicing right now. Uh, then Nick Sirianni is going to speak to the media. So we'll have some highlights of that tomorrow. Union did win 2 nothing against the Red Bulls yesterday. They still are one point out of a playoff position as they're really hitting the the, the end of their season. Uh, they've been playing hot going back to the League's Cup, so hopefully they're able to track down some teams and get into the playoffs. It looks like, I don't know, uh, I guess mathematically they could still get into a regular playoff spot, but it does look like they will be in the wild card if they can can win a couple games and hope that, I, I think it's Atlanta and I forget the other team that's ahead of them, uh, but hopefully they're able to have some postseason soccer for the Union this year. All right, today, we're going to go back to 1991. And usually I, I spend a lot of time planning and prepping notes and, and different talking points for, for these. Not a lot of notes for this one because this is one of those memories I vividly remember. Uh, probably was the worst day of my Eagle fandom uh, at growing up as a kid, going back. I mean, that's uh, the, the Fog Bowl, some of those playoff losses with Buddy. But this day in particular uh, just was a brutal, brutal day. The Eagles did beat the Packers 20-3 to to open the season in Green Bay. However, early in the second quarter, I, I forget whether it was the first or second play, Bryce Pop dove in through the line, hit Randall Cunningham low, and Randall tore his ACL and was out for the season. Uh, every time I hear, and apparently Bryce Pop is a nice guy, but every time I hear his name, I get angry all over again because it ended what should have been and could have been an Eagles Super Bowl run that year. Everything was aligned perfectly for them. The The NFC was down. It was one of the, the not as good uh, I believe that was the 49ers team. Uh, just, uh, or no, it wasn't the 49ers. Who did? I guess it was the Giants won it in 91. Uh, but either way, it was all aligned perfectly for, for the Eagles. And it just went downhill because of Bryce friggin' Pop. And uh, just derailed the entire season for the Eagles. That 91 season, they still went 10-6 and six despite all of the ridiculous carousel of quarterbacks. Jim McMahon couldn't stay healthy. They had Brad Gable, Pat Ryan, Jeff Kemp. Like basically, they were calling anybody who ever threw a football to try to be the quarterback that year. Uh, they did win the game on this day, but just really derailed the season. The defense went on to have a historic season. And as I said so many times on this podcast, for my money, I will stand by this and die on this hill. That 1991 Eagles defense is the greatest defense ever in the history of the NFL. Better than the 85 Bears, better than the 2000 Ravens because they were consistent across the board where 
some of those other the, the Ravens and the uh, the Bears and even the Buccaneers for that matter, they were good, very very good at one thing, and that set up them being good at everything. But that Eagles defense from front to back was completely just phenomenal and outstanding. And for my money, they were the greatest defense ever. But in that game against the, the Packers, Jim McMahon did come off the bench, uh, threw for 257 yards, two touchdowns. Keith Byers uh, had eight catches for 111 yards and a touchdown. And the defense just started their, their dominance that day, intercepting Don Mikowski three times. But it was all about Randall's knee and just really derailing the season because they were coming off of the the wild card loss the year before uh, to Washington. And it was uh, Rich Kotite's first year. And say what you want about Rich Kotite. He, he had some bad luck early in his Eagles tenure. I think they were poised. He was poised to take Buddy Ryan's team to a Super Bowl that year if Randall did not get hurt. Now, you can make the argument that he was, because of his play calling and what he wanted Randall to be, is what led to the injury. Randall said, you wanted me to be a pocket quarterback, and what happens when I'm in the pocket? I tear my ACL. I'm paraphrasing there. Uh, but Randall was set to have an MVP season and with that defense. And everybody says, oh, well, the defense played very well because they had to. Imagine if they didn't have to how well that defense would have played. But on this day back in 1991, the worst day of my Eagles fandom as a kid, Eagles beat the Packers 20-3 but lost Randall Cunningham for the season. And I can honestly say I don't think he was ever the same after that. Uh, just really sort of uh, changed his, his mindset and his tenure there in Philly. Now, he did go on to have that ridiculous season in Minnesota, but... I really do think this was a, a pivotal moment in Randall's career. But the Eagles get the win, but lose Randall Cunningham to for the season with a torn ACL thanks to Bryce freaking Pop. And he might be a nice guy, but I hate him for what he did to my dreams that year. That all happened on this day in 1991, September 1st. Randall Cunningham lost for the season. All right, so let's have some fun for the second anniversary. Now that I'm all pissed off about reliving that Randall Cunningham fiasco in Green Bay. But let's look at the number twos in Philly sports. And we did something similar last year with who wore it better. Uh, but just we're going to focus on the number twos. And currently for the Eagles, Darius Slay wears number two. Jalen Hurts, actually, some people forget this, wore number two uh, in 2020, his rookie year when Carson could not handle the, the pressure of having Jalen on the team. But the greatest number two in Eagles history, David Akers. Uh, obviously the all-time leading scorer, one of the best kickers to ever play in the NFL, let alone for the Eagles. Uh, so David Akers is our number two for the Eagles. Surprisingly, only one person has ever worn number two for the Sixers. And, I mean, if you're going to be the only guy to wear number two, might as well be Moses Malone. Uh, Moses helped the Sixers win that championship in 1983. His jersey hangs in the rafters. Uh, another legendary number two for the Flyers, Mark Howe. His number hangs in the rafters at the Wells Fargo Center as well. Uh, Ed Van Imp was the original number two for the Flyers. I figured to give him some love there. Lots of folks have worn it for the Phillies. Uh, Gene Segura. From the 2022 World Series team. Ben Revere. Sparky Anderson. Tigers legendary manager. Actually played his only Major League Baseball season for the Phillies. Ironically enough. As a second baseman. War number two back in 1959. Probably the best and most famous number two for the Phillies though. Is Granny Hamner. Uh, who's in the Phillies Wall of Fame. And was a member of those WizKids team. And then as a bonus for you today. Because... Why not? It's anniversary week. We're going to go with a number 22 here. And Deuce Staley. Have to go and give some shout out to Deuce Staley on the second anniversary week. Uh, seven years in Philly, 40, over 4,800 yards, uh, 22 touchdowns, 10 receiving touchdowns, 2,500 receiving yards. One of the best to ever do it. One of my all-time favorite Eagles and one of my everlasting memories 
uh, from Deuce Daly was, I guess, the game against the Cowboys, the pickle juice game when he ran all over them for 200 yards, no less. Uh, see what we're doing here. Notice the theme. Uh, but then also that that run in the NFC Championship game against Tampa Bay when we all thought the vet was just going to collapse and then the defense let us down. But those are our funds with number two for our second anniversary week. David Akers, Moses Malone, Mark Howe, and Granny Hamner are our all-time number two team for our four major sports. And that leads us to the question of the day, though. We're going to have a little bit of fun with the past two years and the number two and everything this week. Uh, first, though, recap yesterday's question of the day. I asked you the over-under 10.5 wins for the Eagles and kind of surprising it that this was as close. 56% of you said over, 44% said under. I'm in team over. I don't think they're going to go a lot over 10.5, but I do think they go over 10.5. So thank you, as always, for participating in the question of the day. Now, for your chance to win that free Philly Goat shirt, today's question of the day. What is the greatest sports moment of the past two years in Philadelphia? And really, there's only two that I think are even worthy of being considered here. Was it Bedlam at the Bank or was it the Eagles Super Bowl run? Let me know what you think. 267-495-8531. That'll get you into the Back to the Future voice and text line. But what was the best Philly sports moment of the, the past two years? It's a Bedlam at the Bank, the Eagles Super Bowl run, or do you have something that I'm completely missing? All of that is fair game. It'll get you qualified for the free Philly Goat t-shirt, and then be sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. I think I'm going to have to pick Bedlam at the Bank just because of the, the sheer magnitude of it and what it meant and, and what the, the potential outcome was. Obviously, if the Eagles win the Super Bowl, we're having a different conversation. But let me know your thoughts. Bedlam at the Bank, Eagles Super Bowl, what is the biggest Philly sports moment in the past two years in honor of our second anniversary here? We'll have more fun with the number two tomorrow. Um, and as I'm saying this, I'm just here in the crowd at the vet um, going, deuce. Um, but you gotta love it. Some funds with the number two. Be sure to interact with the Back to the Future voice and text line and be a subscriber to the YouTube channel and you will qualify automatically for a free Philly Goat shirt. And as I mentioned last week, if we get enough people, I'll throw in two. Like, let, let's have some fun. Let's grow this thing. Let's celebrate. I thank you all for two great years. We got more on the horizon. Lots of fun stuff coming up. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. Best Philly sports moment of the past two years. Bedlam at the Bank. Eagles Super Bowl run. Get your vote in. On this day, 1991, the worst day of my Eagles fandom as a kid happened when the Eagles beat the Packers 20-3, but Randall Cunningham out for the season with a torn ACL thanks to one Mr. Bryce Friggin' Pop. Kept it clean there for you. <sighs> terrible. Absolutely terrible. Now you got me in a bad move. Let's go, Phils. Let's win three of four from the Braves. And like I said, let's start hammering the, the, the nails in that coffin. Let's start talking magic numbers next week. Let's let's just end it, set up the rotation, and get one of those two top two seeds. And let's go on a run. And for year three, let's start it off with a World Series championship. What do you say? We'll have more on the Eagles tomorrow once we get some injury updates and see what Nick Sirianni has to say. But it's all about the Phillies. Let's see what they can do tonight. National spotlight. Let's show up and show out and just send the Braves with their tails between their legs back to Atlanta. This has been This Day in Philly Sports History for September 1st, 2024. My name is Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Sunday. Again, don't be an idiot. Don't do anything stupid. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.